The influential book, Finite and Infinite Games, appeared in 1986. It was written by a professor of religious studies at NYU named James Kars. According to Kars's website, he wrote it after participating in a seminar on game theory at New York University. And this book essentially argues that there are two types of games or strategic social interactions, finite and infinite games. The book has been really influential, but as anyone who's read it knows, it's a really hard book to get through. It's written in an aphoristic style, which means it's written in short bursts of paragraphs or pages that don't necessarily overtly connect together. So you really have to think through the book and puzzle through it. So here I'm going to give you my interpretation of Kars's general message. Kars states his thesis fairly early on. On page three, he says, there are two types of games a finite game and an infinite game. A finite game, he says, is played with the purposes of winning. An infinite game is played for the purposes of continuing to play. So let's explore that. Finite games are the kinds of games we think of when we think of games. Board games, sports games, stuff that you enter in, usually multiplayer, where everyone's playing against the same set of rules and the purpose is to either win the game or rank highly in the game. So for our purposes, we can think of two finite games that most people might not normally think of. A formal debate is the first one. That's where people play by the same set of rules with the goal of convincing their opponents or the audience or a moderator of a point and emerging victorious. The second is applying for a job. A company wants to hire for a particular position. There are more candidates than there are jobs and candidates go through a stage of applying resumes, job interviews, performance tasks, all for the purpose of winning that job. Infinite games, however, are a bit more deceptive. Board games and sports games readily come to mind when we think of games, but there are other sorts of games that resemble infinite games where the purpose isn't necessarily to win. So imagine young kids engaged in some sort of fantasy role play. They're playing a role of castle or playing house or something like that. The goal isn't to win. The goal is really to continue to play. If a finite game is a formal debate, an infinite game is a conversation where none of the participants are really engaged to win anything except the pleasure of being in the conversation or maybe continuing the conversation. And if a finite game is a job interview, an infinite game was more enduring, like having a successful long-term career. So let's go over some of the elements of finite and infinite games and what make them different. Kars goes over several things that make finite and infinite games a bit different. The first is that finite games always have what he calls boundaries. And he says to have such boundaries means that the date, the place, the membership of each finite game are externally defined. So what does that mean? Well, when you play a sport or a game where the purpose is to win, the rules are already set up in advance of the game. When I pull out a board game, there's an instruction manual that lays out the instructions we're supposed to play with. Now, me and my friends can change the rules of the game before we play, but we really can't change the rules of the game during play, especially if both or all parties don't agree to the rule changes, then it defeats the purposes of playing to win. So let's think about our two finite games. A formal debate definitely has rules. Each party is allowed a certain amount of time to speak Speak, and then the next party speaks and maybe there's a section where each party can answer other parties but there's rules that are set up in advance and there's an end point after which maybe so many people have done certain rounds where the decision is made on who wins and that's important if there's no decision made at the end if there's no terminus point where the game stops it's really not a finite game anymore and a similar thing happens with a job interview even though you're going in to get a job, not necessarily to win. You are in some sense going in to win a job. So there are finite sets of rules. The company might say, send your applications and your resumes to this email address or on this website, and it should be formatted in this way. And the job interview is at this time, and they probably have a list of questions that they're going to ask all candidates. Those questions aren't up to you, and you can't say in the middle of the job interview, can we change the list of questions? That would probably disqualify you from the job. And again, there's a terminus point at the end of the game where a winner is declared. So-and-so gets a call, and they are informed that they get a job. Now let's look at infinite games on the other hand. Kars says that while finite games are externally defined, infinite games are internally defined. Think about a debate versus a conversation. In a formal debate, the rules are set out in advance. 
One person has 30 seconds to speak. Another person has 30 seconds to speak. The third person has 30 seconds to speak. And you go around again, according to the rules that were set up. A conversation doesn't work that way. We don't approach someone and say, let's talk, but you can only speak for one minute and then I get to speak for a minute and then you get to speak for a minute. It may be that during the conversation, I realize that maybe I've been speaking too much and the other people in the conversation look a little bit annoyed, like they have something they want to say and I keep interrupting them. Well, we can informally and usually tacitly change the rules. I can change my strategy of play. And again, I'm not changing my strategy like a finite game in order to win. I'm changing my strategy in order that we can have a more equitable and maybe more lasting and more interesting conversation. And we can say the same about having a career. Unlike getting a job interview where there are certain rules, there are certain practices that people will recommend to help you get a job. There's really no rule book for a career. It really depends on the moment and the context. And you are free at any point to shift strategies. If one particular approach doesn't seem to work, you can shift strategies. And again, you're not shifting strategies in order to win a game. You're shifting strategies in order to, let's say, make sure that you have and you keep a good job and make sure that you're happy in your career and things like that. Let's go back to the purpose of finite and infinite games. Recall that Carr said that finite games are played for the purpose of winning the game. Infinite games are played for the purpose of continuing to play the games. So one thing Carr says about finite games is that what one wins in a finite game is a title. When you play a finite game, your goal is to win the game or to rank highly in the game or something like that. And that usually results in some sort of title. Now, a title can be a formal title. In the job interview, it's obvious that you win a job and that's the prize. In a formal debate, you might win a prize, some sort of championship. But a title can actually be a bit more subtle than that. And Kars says as much. A title can simply be a recognition by the other players or whatever the audience is, the other players in some sense are the audience, that you have won the game. If no one knows that you have won the game, if no one is aware that you've won a game or that you've ranked well, then there's really no purpose to the finite game because the purpose of the finite game is to win. And in order to win, there needs to be recognition of some sort that you've won. So let's go on to infinite games. How are infinite games different? Well, Carr says that every moment of an infinite game therefore presents a new vision or new range of possibilities. Where finite games have what Carr calls boundaries, infinite games are quote unquote horizons. And what he means by horizons is instead of there being an end point where you know how you rank in the game, an infinite game simply just keeps on going and each end point seemingly is a new beginning point. So if we get to a point in a conversation where we think we've ended, there's always ways to restart or pivot the conversation elsewhere. Doesn't mean we're going to do it, but it does mean that every time you get to a certain location, there's always new possibilities, unlike a finite game. So the reason he uses the metaphor of a horizon is because every time you think that you've reached the end of the horizon, which is the end of your frame of vision, you're always somewhere new that opens up new possibilities. There's never a stopping point to a horizon. Now let's talk strategy. Kars is very explicit that finite games are played to be win and therefore players make every move in a game in order to win it. When you are in a formal debate, you are making every move, you are gearing every part of your speech towards the idea of winning. It's really never engaged in just to have fun. You might think that there's a really nifty and witty turn of phrase that you could use in the debate, but if you think it will sacrifice your chances of winning the debate according to the rules, you won't do it. Same thing with a job interview. Let's say that you're in a job interview and you're having a great conversation with the people who are interviewing you and you decide that you would really like to speak freely because this is a very interesting conversation and you'd like to pivot it in some direction. You're going to think to yourself, is that pivot going to help me win the job or is it going to harm my chances of winning the job? And if it doesn't help your chances of winning the job, you probably won't do it. Infinite games, on the other hand, are played for the purposes of playing or at least the enjoyment of the play. So to be serious, Carr says, is to press for a specified conclusion. To be playful, as you would in an infinite game, is to allow for possibility whatever the cost to oneself. The easiest way to see this might be to look at the infinite game of having a successful career. 
So the finite game of doing a job interview, you're going to want to win that particular job. But let's say that your goal is to have a really good career. And at some point you feel like taking on a certain project or taking on a certain job will actually be counterproductive to your long-term success at having a good career. You might actually turn that project down in a way that you would never do in a finite game if the goal was simply to win the project. So you might sacrifice certain things for yourself in order to maintain a longevity of your career or in a conversation again you or your partner can change the rules based on how you think the conversation is going there may be something you might really really want to say but you feel like you've spoken too much and maybe your partner is getting annoyed and if you speak too much any longer they might discontinue the conversation you might sacrifice that thing you want to say so that you can maybe enjoy the conversation a bit longer the last difference between finite and infinite games has to do with the function of time within the game. Finite games by definition are finite. They have a finite endpoint and everyone who plays knows the rules about when the endpoint is drawing near. So Cars says this, for the finite player in us, freedom is a function of time. We must have time to be free. So we can think of a sport that has a certain number of innings or a certain number of quarters or a time limit, a shot clock, etc. The more time you have left in the game, in some sense, the more free you are to make mistakes, the more margin for error you have. The more that time elapses and the more the end is close, the pressure becomes really on. If you're down by a certain number of points, you stand a better shot of being able to win the earlier in the game it is. The fewer seconds or minutes you have, the less constrained you are to try novel plays and things like that, the more perfect you have to be. In some sense, it's the same in a formal debate. A formal debate has a certain number of rounds with a certain amount of time you can speak during each round. And as that time dwindles down and as those rounds dwindle down, and as the end draws closer, the pressure becomes really on. The same thing with a job interview in some ways. You have to have your application in by this particular date. You have to do your job interview on this particular date. You have to show up on time, etc. Really, time is very constrained. And whoever is controlling the game is dictating the amount of time that you have. That's very different than an infinite game. Let's take a conversation. Now it may be that you have somewhere you have to be in a half an hour, and that changes how you converse with your conversation partner. But even then, it doesn't feel the same as a formal debate where you have a certain number of rounds and a certain number of opportunities to win the conversation. And most of our conversations are a bit more leisurely than that. We're usually at a point where we have a lot of time to be able to spend, and the conversation can go here or there. This is what Kars means when he says the infinite player in us does not consume time but generates it. Oftentimes when we're in a conversation, the goal is to keep going, especially if we enjoy the conversation. And oftentimes that's the case with a career. So if you're trying to win a job interview, you have a certain amount of time in order to do it. And all of your strategy is devoted towards using that time wisely in order to get to that end point. Now you're gonna use your time wisely when you try to have a good long career as well, but you're not trying to consume time, you're trying to keep the time going. So let's briefly review. Here are all the aspects of finite and infinite games. In a finite game, the purpose is winning. The rules are externally defined. The winner wins a title. You strategize in order to win that title and your time is spent trying to win that title. Infinite game is very different. The purpose is continuing to play. The rules are internally defined. The play is continued in the sense that you don't have a certain amount of time set for it. You strategize in order to continue to play and time is generated rather than consumed. Here we come to what I think is the most important point of Kars' book. He says, finite games can be played within an infinite game, but an infinite game cannot be played within a finite game. This in some ways is a real head scratcher, so let's disentangle this. First, Kars wants us to be aware of what kind of game we're playing at any given time. He's not against finite games, even though the book makes it easy to sound like he is. He just wants to make sure that we're always aware of the kind of game that we're playing. Think about the really annoying conversation partner who believes that all conversation is debate and the goal of all debate is to win. No one wants to converse with that person and I think what Kars would say is that he's engaging in what should be ideally an infinite game. 
of conversation, but treating it like it's a finite game where the goal is always to win the conversation, to talk the loudest, to make your points more forcefully, and to always convince your conversation partners that you are correct. No one wants to be in that sort of game. But Carson's larger point, I think, is that finite games can and always will exist within infinite games, but infinite games cannot exist within finite games. Let's bring this to a close by taking the career satisfaction example. In order to have career satisfaction, you will absolutely need to win certain finite games. You will need to win certain jobs from job applications in order to get jobs. You will need to win business from certain clients. You might need to win certain promotions. You may need to win over your competitors in certain ways, but that doesn't mean you're going to have career satisfaction. Career satisfaction involves those, but it involves a lot more. It involves making sure you're agile enough to change the rules with changing markets, to make sure that you are adjusting yourself as new goals come into your life, things like that. But you absolutely cannot have a happy career if your entire goal is to win a particular finite game. If your goal is to win in your field in a certain year, once you do that, the game is over. You have nowhere else to go. So if your goal is simply the finite game, you will never achieve success at the infinite game that involves continuing to play.